Well, I'm pretty sure I bought the worst 57 Chevy. <laughs> Not only in the planet, but that I have owned, and I think those are usually, they go hand in hand. So, the story with this thing, 57 Chevy, two-door hardtop, it's a real two-door hardtop, what is left of it. Um, so, it was in probably April or something like that of, of this current year. It's so like early, early spring, snow on the ground, everything. The guy got a lot of sheet metal off of, he bought this thing, uh, he, he paid a little bit of money for it, and it's, it was in his backyard, and he was going to get to it, going to get to it, and then his dog got sick. I had no need for this car, no want for this car, no use for it, I, <sighs> Tri-5 Chevys find me. Anyways, he sent me a message, he's like, hey, I need cash right now today, the dog is literally in at the vet right now and needs the bill paid, <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I paid 1500 bucks for all of this. Now, I know it looks rough, because it is rough, but it came with a whack of parts. My shed, I've, I've been getting parts throughout the uh, last few weeks or ever, but my shed is full of stuff. He's got, being a sheet metal guy, endless returns, you know, whatever. So we have quarter panel patches in, in here is the lower section of the back. So we have both lower quarters. Uh, over here, I'll show you all the, the goods it came with. Uh, fenders and doors. It has a second set of doors, I believe, that supposedly. Uh, he's given me floor patches, which I don't know if I'm gonna use or not. Um, a hood, look at this cool like teardrop style like Ford hood deal. Chopped up core support, brand new rockers. Um, wheel tubs uh, for the back. So the story of this thing is it was taken off the road in the 70s and they were going to turn it into a race car in the late 70s, early 80s. So it wasn't on the road that long. So it actually wasn't that rusty in the grand scheme of things. Danielle looked at me like I'm crazy, but um, if you look at like the trunk floor, for instance, they all rot out. It's actually in really nice shape. The problem is they decided to cut out the wheel tubs because they were going to mini tub it or whatever they were going to do. So wheel tubs are butchered out, unfortunately. Those tubs that came with it are mini tub tubs, supposedly. So I don't know. There's a lot of, for $1,500, it's a good parts car. <laughs> it came with all the side glass. The only glass I'm missing is the windshield. There's a set of bucket seats from something and a back seat. It's not Tri-5, but it is there. If you look at the floor, so again, it actually what's left isn't too rusty. They cut a bunch out. Um, I'm probably just going to put a full pan in it just because it's so, so easy. The frame is rotten on the back of one side, but it comes with another frame. <laughs> so like, it's just, there's stuff. Now my plan with this is, the past few cars, well, the, I guess whatever. The Nomad was expensive, the Chevy 2 is expensive, and I'm, I'm kind of ready to do some real, real deal budget builds. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I have a lot of parts, obviously, Tri-5 Chevy. I think I can get this thing running, driving, like safe, like legit, for less than $5,000. I've already exhausted some of that budget. <laughs> so, uh, we $1,500 in the car. I went on eBay and there's a guy selling tubular control arms, a full front disc brake kick, and drop spindles was $1,000. Was that last night when you couldn't sleep? I couldn't, I was on a plane there yesterday all day and my legs were killing me so I kept waking up. So last night, it was at two o'clock morning, ordered that for a grand, so we're 2,500 bucks. The floor pans are literally 99 99 99 so $1,000. I'm just going to put one in. It'll be a nice enough car. So we'll do that. So that's $3,500. Um, there is clearly no rear end in it, as you can see. I do have a selection of Tri-5 rear ends. So these are all... This is actually a re all new brake Tri-5 rear end. But this one here is the 10 bolt out of that Chevy 2 that we did for Danny. So 
Tri fives are 60 wide or 59 and a half. That I believe is 58, so it'll be narrower. Obviously, with the wheel tubs, you know we're gonna we're gonna mini tub it. I bought for the Nomad, so this is where I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit. I bought the pocket kit to move the leaf springs inboard. I don't know what that costs, but I have a hundred hundred fifty dollars maybe. Uh, Frank's Garage dropped off a set of leaf springs in good shape, so we have leaf springs for it. We'll put that on the other frame, which comes with it. So, so I mean, that rear end, oh, it's got new brakes in it, new wheel seals, new everything, and it has zero miles on it. So we'll be able to put a big tire on it. Um, all the sheet metal is with it. Side glass, I got it by a windshield. So we'll hit it up uh, all city classics. Trim, it's missing a few bits, but Tri-5 trim, I probably have a lot. Bumpers and all that. I do have the rear trunk section um, for repair panels in I think it's a hundred dollars. The trunk itself is fine, but it's the little filler piece below. Um, well, this piece right here is all mangled up. I think I have another one of those. We could probably just straighten that, but I do have one. Put that in there. It came with a deck lid, and I have a deck lid. Came with hinges. So honestly, it came with a lot of stuff. Um, a guy I've kind of met on the internet, he has a 283 and a power glide, I think, which I can have for free. Ran when parked, so it might be garbage. Uh, I have a turbo 350, so we have a running gear for it. Slam a drive shaft in it. Um, Murr bought for me, so now it's like all free parts. Murr bought me a cluster and all sorts of stuff like that. I also I think I have a lot of four-door stuff. We'll put a Amazon harness in it. Headlights and all that. I don't know if the, the fenders have nothing, but headlights and all that we have. Actually, it came with all that stuff. Now that I think about it. When I was gone at cruising the coast right before, the guy dropped off two full his SUV, two full SUV loads of stuff. So the shed, she's full. All the HVAC stuff, all the vent stuff, inner tubs, it's all there. This was a complete car that got taken apart to be a race car, and that was the end of it. So, our plans, my plan, I don't want to go like a pro street look, because that's not really my style, but lower than the front, lower than the back. Well, so here's, here's where I want to go. So you know Newburn has his 57 Chevy two-door hardtop crusty. Well, I want to be crustier. That's what this is going to be. I love his car. And I'm not trying to copy him. It's like a whatever. An homage. Homage. That guy, that car is magnifique. So we're going to do the same thing. His car is lowered. He's got lowering springs. I have lowering blocks somewhere. So we're going to do lowering blocks, two inches, two inches in the front. I have some used coil springs because, you know, again, try five stuff I have. So we'll put this thing together, slam it two or three inches, small block Chevy, turbo 350, 10 bolt. Do you want this car? I have a question. Yes. Here's what everyone actually is going to want to know. It might keep the bumper. bumper it came. no bump. It came with three bumpers. Um, so we got to jam this thing together and kind of see, uh, you know, frame swap, all that. So yeah, small block, turbo 350, 10 bolt. New floor pan, tubular control arms, disc brakes, 10 bolt rear with all brand new brakes. We'll replumb it. The fuel tank, there's one in it, but I have the fuel tank that came in that 56, which we didn't end up using. So I put an EFI tank in it, so I have a brand new fuel tank for it. Um, honestly, so we're at $3,500. We have $1,500 to play with. The windshield's going to be spendy. It'll probably be a few hundred. Trim, I don't think it's going to get a lot of trim <laughs> just yet. It'll be a pretty bare bones, ratty car. So my two fav favorite 57 hardtops, Merlin's, Merlin Johnson, and David Newburn's. Those two cars, perfect. And I want my very own version of it. Yes, Danielle in the back. Did you budget for a supercharger? <laughs> Not yet, but it's coming. So I have, I mean, it's. I know it's missing a lot and it's an absolute disaster. And if you were to buy this car because you're like, I want to buy a Tri-5 Chevy, don't buy this. Do not buy this. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to have it on the road for $5,000, and people are going to call bullshit or whatever. It's got a valid title. I might, I got to add that on it. So this thing is all the paperwork's legit. Um, now, obviously, stuff like wheels and tires, I have miscellaneous things. So if you're a hot rodder, you're going to have this kind of stuff. It's like the leftover Tri-5. This will be leftover parts. I keep saying I'm done building stuff, and I have so many leftover parts, but I am probably... 
well, I did get restocked on 57 parts with this deal. So the car I didn't want and the car I don't need, but it'll be cool. And like I said, I think this will be like a super low buck. So, I mean, right now we're working on this. We have that 56 four door to two door. We're doing the LS on it, which is kind of budget, I guess. We don't look at it like that. So I want to do two budget builds. We'll let some of that YouTube ad revenue fill up the cup a little bit. Thanks for watching. And uh, then I think Camaros. And then I think one of those Camaros might be, might be a spendy one again. Yes, yes. When are you bringing home the Camaros? So we're in. When? Middle, we're in middle of Oc October right now. <laughs> I've been traveling for work. My day job's been killing me lately. But uh, middle of October, I want to get this going. This had, well, it didn't have to leave. He said I could store as long as I wanted, but we're like minutes away from snow. It's a gorgeous day today. It's not supposed to be raining the rest of the week. So. I want to get it home, got the garage cleared out. I want to get this at least so it's a roller runner driver. So we'll change the chassis, motor trans in, rear end, bolt it all together, kind of tack it all in. It'd be like three, to three, four days. But we'll make it so it looks like a car again. I don't know if this is a keeper for me or if it's just a flip. I, I, we'll see what happens. We'll start putting it together and decide where I end up. Uh, but make it so it's sealed in a car. We can put it in storage if we want. The 56, it's got a little bit of work to do to it, so we'll get on that. But then the Bricklin also has to come home because Mer wants his Bricklin, and then Camaro. So that's kind of the winter plan as of right now. This 56 Bricklin, at least one Camaro, and probably whatever else I buy. Because the second it snows, deals pop up. Oh, and there's a card in auction I want that comes out Saturday. So we'll see. Anyways. That's this car in a nutshell. I think what I'm going to do for the rest of the video, I've been yammering on it. Everyone's like, mm, quit yammering. I'm going to bring this thing in and I'm going to slap all the stuff on to make it look like a car because that is always motivational in my mind. We'll just make it look like something and then we can decide what I want to do from there. So like I said, floor pan, I'll order that. I actually talked to the guy today, I'll order it tomorrow. Get that. That should be local-ish. A couple provinces over, they stock it. But I'll probably hang the doors Put the rockers in so it's all sturdy, make sure they latch and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, this thing is ready for a floor pan. <laughs> Motor's out, trans is out, the body's literally just sitting on it. There's zero front suspension. Put the deck lid on it, square it all away. It's going to stay rough and tumble. There's no bones about it, which I kind of dig. It really suits this garage. Well, that's, that's just it. So we're doing low buck in the old garage, no special tools. Like this is like... We're throwing it old school, DD Speed Shop. <laughs> so I'm gonna back this thing in. I actually did pretty good backing her in. I could not believe <laughs> I'm not a good backer upper. You should see the back bumper on cars I own. But uh, except for the transmission's not happy in the truck, the shift linkage fell off. So we'll see if it even works again, but we'll get this thing in. Probably, I gotta finish a video for tomorrow, do a little bit of, of snacking, and maybe I'll be back later tonight or tomorrow we'll finish it up, but I wanna make it look like a car. The worst 57 Chevy the worst. I don't even know. Just the worst. There's not of all time or whatever. It's the worst. I like that it's just going to be made out of leftovers. You know, it's going to be a leftover thing. We did a good thing to help out. The guy's dog is still around. So that's good. <laughs> and he's a super old guy, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. It, it's, it's good parts. And uh, I don't know how many more 57 Chevrolets a man needs. <laughs> but this is also a car that, I mean, realistically, I think if I do put the pan in it, I get it all kind of together running and driving, I'll have five grand in it, but I think it's probably worth 10. So that's where we might end up with it, just kind of selling it, flogging it down the road to some other uh, sucker, good customer. And uh, yeah, go from there. I, I like it. I'm, I'm excited about it. I think a big set of tires on it would be neat. We'll, uh, we'll see where we end up, but it should be, like I said, we have all kinds of parts. And whatever we don't have here in the shed or in the basement, We'll just take off Danielle's car. Okay, I'm going to back this in. She's a little angry. It's fine. <laughs> uh, lots of room. Yeah, I just don't want the boom to smack into nothing. I'll just go until I hear a crunch and then I'll pull ahead.
How we doing there? Okay. We borrowed this stuff. I don't know if it came with it or maybe it's just spare parts here, but this is what it was sitting on in this backyard. I might just keep some of this. Actually, I have one of these. This is heavy. What did this sit on? Yeah, I remember what I did here. It was a bit of a thrash to get her taken care of. <laughs> Having a tow truck is handy. One that has all the gears in the transmission would be even better, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> One thing at a time. Yeah, I don't know what happened. It's just a little O or a little bushing piece. The Rock Auto or something will have it. Okay. We're just getting right in there. National Geographic. Want to make sure it goes in the park and doesn't roll into that creek. Holy muscles! <laughs> Been eating more. Speaking of that, let's make me some dinner. Uh, how do you feel about me just ordering dinner? Feel great about that. Huh? I feel pretty great about it. So here we go. Park this junker. I don't have buyer's remorse yet. I think it's because I paid for it in April. And you saved a puppy. I saved a puppy, and that actually makes me really feel good. You like, if you didn't buy, I actually would have been very upset. Oh no. Ooh. Just missing a few bits. Tomorrow will be a fun day. We kind of slap her all together and make it look like a car. I'm excited for it. Okay. Put this stuff away. Clean up. Thumbnail for tomorrow's video. And uh, we'll be back in. Ooh, it's real rough on this side. This side was up against the garage. I didn't really see. A few pop rivets. That'd be cool. Let's eat something. Done. <laughs> what is that? Oh my god, that's ugly. I love that hood. It's fantastic. Um, so I just kind of pieced it all together last night or two nights ago. I didn't I didn't work on anything yesterday. I was gonna say you were in your under on the couch yesterday. She was a nappy day yesterday. Anyway, um, yeah, but everything is literally just uh, this is gonna be like a from a movie, you know. But. Uh, Luckily, see this, in case anyone's thinking, oh, all the door stuff's there, that's sweet. Um, it's a cheap car and all that, yada, yada. These are the things that are gonna bite you if you, you know, you buy this and you're like, oh, it's complete, no door hinges. Now, I believe, I'm hoping anyways, that four door and two door is all the same because uh, I have a lot of door hinges. Now, I've never ever really looked at these, but they are, they're different top and bottom, so you gotta make sure the doors will fit. Everything is fine thread hardware. I didn't, and it's got uh, like tapered deals, which uh, I didn't buy that. So we're gonna see, hopefully those threads are all decent. We'll run a couple bolts in them real quick. The way these go is there's two bolts top and bottom. There's two bolts at the back. Chunk. Hopefully that'll all work out in there. I didn't look too close. But today we're gonna hang the doors, get those both on. Uh, the fenders are just sitting here, same thing. Um, so we're gonna hang the fenders. I do have a core sport in there. I wanna make sure the, the car is kind of squared up. I think it should be. Honestly, it's not that bad. Like this rocker, 
Oh, it's been riveted and stuff. But the plan is get all together, put a deck lid on it, just sit on there, make sure the car is square or true, whatever you want to call it. And uh, do that. I got the frame. So new frame's coming for it tomorrow. My buddy Mikey's going to drop it off for me. We're going to get that rip front suspension off. Probably do the pocket kit. I ordered the floorboard. We can slide everything in and then uh, start kind of bolting it all together. But I want to do one thing at a time so we can, you know, the car is square, the doors fit good. We'll chop out a rocker, put a rocker in. Rocker on that side. Just keep the car somewhat structural. You could weld bars in it, but uh, I feel like this thing's been apart like this and rolled around for, well, the 80s, so 40 years. Whatever squareness there was, it still has. So I'm going to mess around with these doors real quick and we'll come back maybe when I'm struggling to put them on. That should be fun. So we'll do that real quick. Fine thread junk. I had to run out. Um, I bought I bought the wrong size bolts. In my defense, so they're 5 16 fine, but they have a big head on them, so they're a 3 8 head, which is usually, uh, or 9 16 head, which is usually a 3 8 bolt. And uh, I guess I forgot, so I got 5 16 we used to drill in a tap. I also want a new tap set because they're half price. So we're just kind of clean up all the threads because they're a little, they're a little 40 years sitting in the rust, but uh, it should be okay here. All these, all these are captured nuts. So the idea is they're designed to kind of, they're supposed to move around. Uh, these ones currently don't. Tate, do you mean these nuts? Those are the ones, yep. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna put the bigger bolts. I guess it's supposed to have tapered stuff and whatever. We're just gonna go ahead and put in whatever we think is right. The DD Speed Shop way. So, hopefully, I have enough stuff here. Oh, it's quite low. <laughs> oh, is it hard on your knees, buddy? <laughs> it is, dude. What do we got here? So, we're gonna go ahead and. DD Speed Shop the hell out of it. Oh yeah, these will fit. I guess sedan and hardtop are the same. Mr. Chevrolet just understanding how it was going to be when some Canadian hippie was... Is that a real, like, Mr. Is it named after a guy? Uh, yeah. Derek Chevrolet. Actually? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sure at some point, though, someone's going to be wailing in the comments oh these are froze up but we'll just you know what we're gonna do we're gonna match this hinge to the rust line no one has to know <laughs> <laughs> the best part is so i'm putting this in with temporary hardware right it's, it's not temporary it's forever <laughs> uh, we got here okay so I'm gonna slam these in real quick and then we'll come back when we're trying to hang the door, which may be a tripod thing because you're gonna have to hold the door. Oh, we, we, we don't do good doing the door together. No. From this angle, you have a huge bugger in your nose. No, I don't. Spin the cat. You're holding it. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gross. Okay, we'll get this jammed in. You're a huge booger. Thank you. Okay. Oh god, it's heavy. Oh, god. oh it's so heavy. You're gonna have a trouble. No, there's no glass in it. It's fine. So now. <laughs> you wanna hold the back here? Do you think there's a record? I mean, other than the people assembling Tri 5 Chevys in the 50s, <laughs> I feel like I've put on more Tri 5 doors. What's going on? There we go. Okay. I need a light, I can't see. Oh, I'm holding this. I'll hold it. Oh, no. <laughs> Where's the light? Right there in front of you, on the vice grip. Right, 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 there it is. Hold it back again. Back again. Yay. This is, there's nowhere to sit. Someone's cut the floor out of this car. <laughs> Who do that? What are these jokes today? <laughs> Usually I don't have the banter of someone else being in here. I'm just talking to myself like a psychopath. Uh oh. 
it's not going to go easy. This may turn into time lapse. Can you go any slower? Yes. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> I know, I'm holding the front. Oh, this light's in the way. <laughs> Man. Lift it up. 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 You pull it back. Up. Right there. Right there. Actually, what I should do is loosen these. That uh, really did something there. Okay. Can I go now? Yep. Yeah. She bolted. I'm stuck. <laughs> no, I, this. Oh, <laughs> you're legitimately stuck. <laughs> She's a little low. She, oh, you know what? Maybe we should move that whole thing of tap and die before I, before I <laughs> drop it all on the ground. Nailed it. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna think about it for a second and we'll come right back. So here is how we're gonna adjust the door. I've loosened it so it's floppy, but we'll go ahead and latch it. It's actually not too bad. And then I'm gonna go on the other side. Oh, actually, you know what? Look at this move. I can't, I can't see. Oh, there we go. There's one. Test, test. Whoops. Not bad. Not bad. It needs, it needs a little bit of fine tuning. The top of the door has to come back and the bottom of the door has to go in, but. Well, when it's on the other frame though, will that change it too? Uh, the problem is these are clearly not the doors from it. Who knows, the hinges are different, like everything is miscellaneous. So there's gonna be some shimmin involved or we could just zip cut it off and make it kind of fit that way. So we're doing the exact same thing on the other side real quick. Oh, it has bolts on that side. Huh, um, and the door, that's sweet. Put that side on real quick and then we'll hang the front end, deck lid on. We got ourselves 57 Chevrolet. So, we start on the good side. Uh, anyways, I was gonna show you real quick. So these are, this one had a couple of factory bolts and this is 916 head, but it's got 516 thread. But so this goes in this little, it's got like a little dog and you can see it all. That's where all your adjustamante comes from. And then the hinge also has adjustment. So I was doing that, I, I cleaned those with the taps, put a little lube and I was like, oh, I'll just do up here too. And unfortunately three, of the bolts are broken inside and that's a bit of a hassle so now we gotta pull the welder out screw around like you know you can't just buy a good car All right, bolts back here those look good back there anyways oh oh no we're good so now we're going to attempt to do this screw around with torches and heat and anger and fun and oh a gas pedal on this one you want it for your car She's in there pretty good. This car's sweet. All right, let's get, get the welder. We're just gonna put the nut around the broken stud, fill it with weld if we can, while not welding it to the car as much as we possibly can. You know what? I need my welding helmet. This is not going the way I want it.
This hole in the floor is real handy for the old Leatherman. Okay, I'll try and work this back and forth a little. Oh, it's not happy. Is that lube somewhere? On the roof? No? What'd you do? I don't know. Oh, it's right in front of you. Oh, found it. So I'm trying to get this out without. Did it break? Or did we get it out? Got it out. That was a pretty neat trick. Yeah, I came up with it myself. So now, hopefully we can do that a few more times, but we just made ourselves a bolt with a ugliness, so don't touch that, it'll be hot. We got a few more to do, but the idea is so you weld a nut on there so you can grab it, and as you're welding it, the heat, you know, it's the same as running a torch on it, ish. So we'll do these real quick, and then we'll, uh, that's like chasing the threads, saves us a step. Gotta unbolt the body from the chassis real quick. Oh, the straps on the bottom side of this one. Oh, it's on your side. Could make this a little more difficult somehow. I don't know how, but oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, good. Shimmy, shimmy. So, this side shuts mint now. <laughs> like I said, shuts mint. All we're trying to do is just, this is my version of welding bars in. So we'll have to be able to this door closed, do one rocker, you know, then this side. This rocker's actually pretty pretty much finished. I don't, I don't think she's doing a whole lot. All right, internet, you win on this one because it's annoying even for me. I don't mind the old Tri-5 door squeak, but that was ridiculous. There we go. So, yeah, we'll change that rocker first because it ain't doing a damn thing. But as you can tell, I mean, the door still, you know, closes-ish, so that's fine. Uh, I do want to set the fenders on, so they have some little holes there. The, f the body is forward on the, on the chassis, so if you look here, you see this brace, kind of right where my hand is, right where my hand is there, and that right there is the body mount, so that obviously has to go back just that much. I don't know how we're going to do that easily. We do have a tow truck and a winch. Pull it back, maybe? Because we do that, then we can get the core support in the right spot. Sink two bolts in there, two bolts in the fenders. Hood will be in the right spot. The car will be hopefully square and straight. Oh, you kicked that. Now I stepped on it. I think I can just muscle it. Let's see what happens here. Um, Put okay. a block under maybe. We gotta block the front wheels. Then I'll just throw my back out real quick. Found a block of wood and then laziness took over, but let's see if we can. It's caught on something there. It's not gonna go easy. What could it possibly be caught on? Went swimmingly. Um, I'm just gonna jam this in. Still gotta kinda do a little bit of shimming around, but the floor's in the way and everything's... She's making me a little angry. But this core sport should go in. Really, it's just kinda, kinda hold the hood and uh, maybe to hold the fenders in place. We can also, this core sport is, Garbage, this is the classic. Do I have it right way? Curving in. Is that curving in? Mm hmm. Um, it's 
somebody pulled the motor out, cut the core support. Because that's what you do in a Tri-5 Chevrolet. So we're going to jam this together. Can you pass me actually the ratchet with the 916s? If there's one there. So we're just going to kind of... This? No, uh, is that a 916? So I don't think so. It's on the ratchet. Um, like the hand ratchet. One second. Son of a. You want to just put all this shit together? And be... Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, just jam this. Actually, that little impact right there. Oh, there's a battery on it. I'll take that. I kind of like it completely slammed to the ground. We don't really have a whole lot of low cars. We have potholes and terrible, terrible roads. That is true. What's this cut up? That's a bumper. Is the bumper bent? Just add a little bit to the patina. What's hitting on? Everything. Yeah, the bumper's gotta go. Oh, the bumper's definitely bent. Clearly bent. It's bent down and back. Oh, and yeah, these are different fenders and everything. Alright, this is gonna be a... Hang on. Fiasco. Quick torching later. Um, yeah, it's fine. We're not using this frame, and uh, look. Yeah. okay. This thing dialed together right quick. Man, that bumper was mangled, bent. Hardware was junk. Just regular bolts through the bumper, like whoever had this thing just didn't take care of it. You know? And now you come along. I'm rescuing this thing. It's gonna be a car again. So we'll get this uh dialed together real quick, come back, put the hood on. Oh deck lid too. We'll drive it home. In case we gotta get uh deck lid. Also, check out all the doors I got. Look at the horde of two-door tri-five doors. Oh, the deck lid's in the back. Anyways, in here, all of, I just crammed it in here, but all these boxes, tubs, the seats are different. Those two black bins all came with the car. There's stuff behind it, fuel tank. It's just craziness. Except now we gotta get this deck lid behind all these doors. You know, oh, this one's got glass in it. Watch out for the dog bombs. I thought you'd take care of that. Okay. I never even looked at this, but actually it actually looks all right. Got no latch, but I'm sure there's something in the pile. Thanks, helper. You're welcome. <laughs> We still gotta get, actually, should go to today. We gotta get the seats. And there's some rubber bits that go with it. More doors. And the guy's a Tri Five guy. He said whatever else he's not using, he's getting out of it. I can have. There were hinges somewhere. Okay, so the deck lid fits ish. It's jammed up in that bottom bit. Well, the bottom bit's all bent, but it, with like side to side, it's 
everything. Fenders aren't bad. This one, unfortunately, was missing uh, where it anchors in. It's just got like a little doodad there. I think I have some, or all those fenders are the same. I got a few back there. Yeah, it's kind of fell funny. Gentle, gentle. It came with actually two hood bars and the grill piece. One wasn't even broken, it was amazing. There we go. Kind of looks like you squint, right? It's, it you know, looks like 57 Chevy. So we were just saying like, when this guy sold this thing, obviously he needed the, the cash for a good cause. And uh, I looked at it, there was, well, as you saw, no doors, no front clip, no nothing. The seats were in it. It was, had a tarp on it and snow and it was all frozen together. So I couldn't even take the tarp off to see anything. So, I mean, took a flyer for 1500 bucks, right? He said it had fenders and a hood and a deck lid and all these things and you just kind of trust the guy. And then six months later, this is what you have. So my recommendation, if you're gonna sell something, if you get to this level and if you put a diff in it, I immediately think it's probably worth, I don't know, at least double, three, four, five thousand dollars for the right guy, especially if you have all the parts with it, because it looks like a car. And this it was a much better picture with a set of wheels on it for the old Craigslist ad than uh, <laughs> what I showed up with. Not to mention, you have to be willing to, I mean, tow it away with a tow truck or whatever, no rear end. It's uh, it's a bugger. But that's that. I think so. We're gonna go back between this and the '56, kind of back and forth. I want to put rockers in this thing. Uh, I do want to do the chassis here before it gets to be too crazy weather. We've got like another week left to forecast for it. It's supposed to get kind of, oh, real rough. So if I can get the chassis done outside, it'd be really nice. Slide that under, get a couple bolts in it, get the rockers fit, get the doors, the fenders, all that kind of bolted in. Put a floor pan in it, then we can do, you know, motor trans, put the rear end in, all that. It, it actually should go pretty quick. I know it looks like it's an absolute disaster, but it'll be a roller in, uh, the floor comes in and everything, I mean, two, three weeks. Middle of November, the latest, it should look like a, like an actual car that maybe will steer and have a motor and trans in it. So yeah, anyways, there you go. Look for the deals out there. At this point now, I am maxed out on cars. Credit cards are maxed, everything is maxed. And I'm sure I'm gonna look at a car tomorrow. So I'm an idiot. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Comment below, let me know what you guys think of this thing. I wanna call it crustier and tell Newburn that he doesn't have the crustiest 57 Chevrolet anymore. So, you know, and maybe we'll, we'll drive this thing, not just trailer clean it around, you know? Classic Newburn. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.